Linus Darby from RejoiceAndCreate.com. Thanks for stopping by today. Well, I hope you've had a beautiful Christmas season with family and friends and a wonderful start to the new year. I know that we have, but the time comes when I start itching to craft again. So I wanted to show you a few projects, um, starting with this one. And I think it looks like an adorable little beehive. Now this box folding technique, um, I've seen out there before. I have not, um, I did not uh, create this technique to fold the box that way, but when I saw one, I thought how adorable it would be as a little beehive, especially with some of the bee stamps that I've had and ones that are coming out that I've seen in some of the new stamp sets that are coming out. So I think this one is just adorable. And I think it's adorable with the um, button paper, which actually was from a Simon Says stamp stamp kit, I don't know, last year or so. But this time I'm going to do it with a horizontal stripe because I thought that might look more like a beehive um, if you wanted something that looked a little more authentic, maybe. And the piece of paper we're going to use is actually a four inch by a six inch. So if you're using a 12 by 12 inch sheet of paper, you can get six of these from one 12 by 12 inch sheet. And that's why I sized it this way. Um, that's why you'll see some of the scores coming up the way they did. You certainly can make a bigger one, but this one will fit um, a little Ferrero Rocher. It will fit Linderballs, a little handful of kisses. In this one, I actually have um, a dove truffle that I have left over from Christmas and they fit beautifully in there as well. And for the little door, um, I simply used the end of a word window punch. This is a retired punch from Stampin' Up! and I just cut maybe the last half an inch off of it to make my little door. But really you can just cut a little three eighths of an inch by maybe half an inch piece of cardstock to make your little door for your beehive. And then I stamped the bee from this one, because this is the only stamp I have with a bee in there. It's very vintage from Stamping Up, and it's a very adorable little bee. Now, there are a lot of bee sentiments coming out, but what I did is I just found some words I liked, like happy or mine and some of my other stamp sets. And then I went ahead and just stamped different colors of a bigger bee over the top of it to create the sentiment that I liked. And on this one, it's um, the bee happy. For the one I'm doing here, I'm going to use the B mine. All right, so let's go ahead on the six inch side up and score it at three quarters of an inch. Oops, I'm jumping the line. Three quarters of an inch, one and three eighths of an inch, two and one eighth, two and three fourths, three and one half, four and one eighth, four and seven eighths, and five and a half. All right, so let's turn it to counterclockwise. And if you have a directional pattern, you want the top to be to the left at this point. Score it at three quarters of an inch, one and a half, and two and three quarters. All right, keep your uh, scoring tool and we need to get a ruler because we have to make a couple more score lines and let me bring in a template that i have so you can see it a little bit easier this is what we just scored this is what it is right here we have um, several score lines running across and it's a little bit wider three quarters of an inch and then five eighths of an inch three quarters five eighths three quarters five eighths so there's a bigger and a smaller until we get to the glue tab which is a half an inch on that right side so we're going to cut off the top and the bottom of that let me go ahead and do that right now So right now we have the top and the bottom cut off. Next what we're going to do is just cut right up all the bottom score lines to that first intersecting score line. Okay, so these are all cut to the first intersecting score line. That's all we need to do on the bottom, but I'm going to switch it around because we're going to do it on the top. So let me turn this one around as well so you can see how I'm working this one. All right, so we cut this one off and we're actually going to cut up all the rest of these score lines too. Some of these ones we're going to actually cut off. So cut off those score lines to the first intersecting score line that you meet. Okay, and now we're going to cut out the top part to each of the skinnier sections. So this is a wide section. Let me fold that back. We're going to cut the next one over. That's the skinny section. Okay, this is a wide section. We'll put that one back and cut the next section. Again, wide, we're going to push that back. 
cut the next narrow section off. And wide, we're going to push that back and cut the next narrow section off. I'm going to turn around this way and do that. Okay, so this is what we have. Let me turn it back around this way. All right, the last two score lines we're going to make is actually right here, these green ones. And we're going to take, we're going to estimate the center of the top right there, and we're going to score down to each of those bottom uh, corners on that rectangle. All right, so take your scoring tool and just find, eyeball the center of this section here, put it right there, and then score right down to the bottom corner on that rectangle. So right from here to here is what I'm doing. And then I'll just go from here to here. So I'm going to put my uh, scoring tool there and I will flip my ruler around and just score it right to that same mark that I just was at. Again, same with this one. Okay, so now I've scored all those green ones, and we're going to take a minute and just code fold those. Actually, we'll go ahead and take a minute now and fold all of our score lines. Now, as I said, I've seen this type of box on many different channels, but the one that inspired me to think it was a uh, beehive was actually on DIY, yay, DIY, YouTube uh, video. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to put some glue on our glue tab and glue the side together. And for speed, I'm going to use my Tombow. Okay, and yeah, that's so cute. All right, let me push these out for the moment. And we'll go ahead and glue our bottoms together. And they don't reach quite all the way across, so just estimate them from one side to the next. Where is my back? My back is right there. All right, and once you've got it in the shape that you want, go ahead and turn that over and push that down. Okay, now you'll see on these tabs that are left, we're going to punch a circle in the center of the tab. I'm going to use an eighth of an inch punch and try to eyeball it to the middle. If you want to be exact, you can uh, measure corner to corner. Well, that was not quite close enough. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm going to use some twine that matches. I'll make a loop and tie a knot. And then find the one that's going to be on the bottom, so the one that's in the back. All right, this is this is the back. So this will be my I'm going to do the side to side first. And let me go ahead and put my candy in, and this time I'm going to put a Ferrero Rocher. Okay, so the side one. Another side. The back.
and then the front. All right, so isn't that very cute? All right, I'm gonna put the door on. Of course, the uh, beehives that we have around here, our local ones are all really just boxes. <laughs> They look like big white rectangular boxes. We have several of them out uh, that always take advantage of the honey or the blossoms from the orange trees nearby because I live in Florida. So we have that there and now I'm going to cut out one of my um, bees and my sentiment. All right so for the little sentiment I just punched out the little bee mine that I liked with a 7 8 inch scallop circle punch and now let me go ahead and tie it. And I thought it was really cute. What I did is I just tied it from one side on that top flap to the hole. So all I did was threaded it from here to there. And here's a cute little beehive tree holder. I think that's adorable. So I think these little beehives are just adorable and you can fit a little treat in there as well. And you can get six of them out of one 12 by 12 inch sheet of paper. I'll leave the template on my website at rejoiceandcreate.com for this blog post. And I hope you enjoyed today's project as well. If you liked the video, please subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to be notified of new videos as I upload them. For more information, please visit rejoiceandcreate.com for this project or others I've done. And until we meet again, I hope your days are blessed. Bye!